Uh, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us today for this session. Um, yes, we're here to talk about uh, fusing code and celluloid, um, two main storytelling tools that have been around in the industry for ages. Well, not really. The first one's been around for ages. Nice one. And the second one has come to, into position over the last decade or so. Um, they're very different uh, types of work, different skill sets, different backgrounds. But more than ever, it's very important to fuse the two. Now I'm going to use my clicker. <laughs> Yay. All right. So who are we? Um, this is Vincent, my colleague. Um, he started out at Media Monks 10 years ago um, at our banners department. Uh, then went to do games, creatively led our London office, which was our first or foreign office, and now is back as one of our creative directors. It's a mouthful. Um, I direct films. Um, I come from a classic film education. Uh, you could say I've been working with Media Monks for three years now. Uh, I've done projects for KLM, Geox, IKEA, most recently Old Spice. Um, all of these will be featured in the presentation at some point. Click. So, um, yeah, a quick introduction of who we are as a company. We are Media Monks. And um, we like to say we're the biggest creative digital production company on the planet. But that's mostly for the Americans. They love that stuff. Um, currently, we're at 300 people, which is crazy. Ten years ago, when I started, it was 15 guys in the basement. Um, smelly basement. A very smelly. A man smell basement. Um, so we like to say we have one office and five locations. It's a bit of a relay race. By the time Singapore... Uh, goes out for drinks, Amsterdam wakes up, London wakes up, and by the time we clock out, New York and Los Angeles take over. We just opened Dubai, but it's not in the <laughs> slide yet. Um, but yeah, the idea is that we can offer 24-hour service. So what is a creative digital production agency? Um, basically, ad agencies or entertainment companies have a campaign or a product, and they have an idea. That idea, if it's digital, they can come to us. And then with the patented Media Monks approach, <laughs> we can uh, help enhance that idea and make it work. Boom, digital products. Um, this is the, the gospel by our COO and beard mascot, Wesley Terhaar. Bing. <laughs> Human sound effect. So what does the... Oh, oh that was too fast. I, I want to click. I wanna, now that I have this clicker, I want to click it. <laughs> Don't press the button. Sorry. <laughs> um, so, yeah, what do these projects look like? Let's look at the mixtape. Right. Don't let them out. They're my baby. What else can you do? Coyote penis bone. And I'm like, what is this? He's like, you ain't really calling my mother. He turns around and looks at me. And he's a dude, there's a horse in the bar. <laughs> I can't begin to tell you. <laughs> Just give me a try.
Thank you, thank you. <laughs> and we'll still finish in 25 minutes, really. It's, yeah. It yeah. kind of long. Long version of the thing. All right. Uh, anyway. So um, some of you might be asking why fuse code and celluloid at all? Why not keep you know, linear standalone online things? Well, there are some very natural reasons for that, which we'll take you through. And there are some very nice business necessities that dictate that fusion. Uh, film is just simply a great way to tell stories. Um, it's way more fascinating than browsing through someone's Facebook page, usually. Um, film is a medium agencies and uh, clients understand, even though Don looks a little bit, little bit puzzled here. Um, uh, storyboards uh, are just way more fascinating uh, to look at than these thingies on the left. Flow chart? <laughs> you could call it a flow chart, yeah. Um, film brings a human element, which is very important. Since, since the dawn of time, we've been trained to look at other people's faces and, and form an opinion about that. We like doing that stuff, so that's, that's a very important one as well. Now, let's go a little bit back in time. So, flashback to the silent era. Um, we call it the silent era because it usually consisted of us sitting silently next to the actual crew uh, who were doing a TV commercial or something important and we were just silently waiting for them to take a leak or go for break so we could shoot our little interactive piece that no one really cared about. Um, or silent as in, I, I, I really don't want to talk about this project anymore, uh, which was the stuff we did over here. He, he doesn't want to talk about it anymore either. He, uh <laughs> so let's uh, transition to the first actual wave of code in celluloid. This time it's personal. So around um, 2011, there was this phase that we call peak personalization. So let's do some math. Um, Flash plus Facebook minus more modern day smartphones uh, gave us the opportunity to create uh, personalized videos. Basically, your face or your data or your Facebook content integrated into a video. We did a lot of this stuff, and a small disclaimer here, uh, some of those projects are still our favorite project of all time, but they were made at a specific time and place in digital history. So <laughs> let's take a look what that looked like back then. Yes. <laughs> Does Wesley know that we're using him for this? I'm not sure. Oh, all right. Um, so basically... A couple more slides, though. <laughs> <laughs> We've done this to death. That's what it comes down to. Um, and even if though it got a little bit out of hand, there was some really cool technical stuff there, like, for instance, the Desperados case. <laughs> Click. Thank you. Uh, in which we made your Facebook profile picture appear in a tattoo on someone's shoulder and completely 3D meshed it to her skin very impressive at the time, and yeah, that was sort of a, a highlight of that phase. Another thing that was popular back then was adding choice uh, to interactive videos, basically deciding what would happen, even though that most likely meant play video A or play video B. Um, here's a really nice ex execution of that. Go left or go right for this Adidas Messi campaign, all done with projection mapping and all sorts of interesting stuff. And uh, the KLM case that you just saw uh, in our mixtape. Um, basically, the sky was the limit. We even sent somebody to space. True story. Did it happen? Really? Not yet. Oh. Mm. Uh, and everything was well with the world until... Ta-da! Plot twist! Uh, I see that platforms. <laughs> so, what happened? Uh, well, first of all, Flash died, which was bad. 
Uh, Facebook API sort of died, the regulations changed, and we couldn't access your profile picture and your personal data in the way that we used to. Um, yeah, mobile lived and flourished and changed the whole technical landscape of the digital production agencies. And uh, yeah, video advertising grows exponentially, and we saw some segregation rather than personalization. What it means is we saw more video content, more different types of video content aimed at specific people instead of one generic piece that you could customize by pasting your face on it. Correct. So what does this mean for our second wave of code and celluloid? Uh, we see three different hybrids of code and celluloid, three different pillars, you could say, uh, of how you can use film in a digital environment. Um, we're going to go through three of those and give you some examples based on our own work. Um, the first one is film in a digital container, in a digital holder. That one is pretty close to the film side of the spectrum. Uh, the second one is where we would like to seduce the user to interact. Uh, it's, 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 not, it's not an obligation, uh, it's an option. Uh, more about that later as well. And the third one is where we put the user in the actual director's chair and where you can look around yourself and have way more creative, or, uh, well, not necessarily creative, uh, way more freedom as a user. Uh, but there's still a lot of film stuff involved there, uh, as you will find out when we get to that. All right, first case, uh, Seven Days of Rain. Um, really one of my favorite projects I've ever did uh, for SMFB and Geox, a little video to explain what it was about. Click. So, to test their line of waterproof and breathable shoes, the guys over at Geox flew me in for this next level high-tech experiment, getting soaked in the rain for seven days straight. Now, who wouldn't want that? The point of the experiment was to test the shoes in a rainy urban environment. So every day they had laid out a different activity. All right, let's go. To make sure the rain was constantly pouring, the team created multiple rain devices. Next to a portable cloud, which you can see here, they had a car following me around. Yeah, this one. Ah, oh, and to really top things off, they had an octocopter. Really? All seven episodes of the interactive documentary could be seen on the Geox Amphibiox website. Working smoothly? You could watch extra making of material. There you go. And also see how the shoes handle the conditions up really close. Look at that beautiful foot acting, by the way. Geox made sure people across all devices were able to experience the site in crisp detail. As for the results, well... It looks like people are enjoying my struggle all over the world. Very nice. You know, going through these seven days of rain was a wet and crazy experience. The tests were intense, but I made it, and I wouldn't have missed it for the world. Yeah, so that was fun. Um... Seven Days of Rain, seven episodes. It was what you could call a classic drama. We had uh, the protagonist being hunt hunted around by a rain cloud. Uh, there was comedy. There was a boy meets girl love story. There were waterproof shoes. What else do you need? Um, the thing with this is it's not about you. Uh, it's, actually about <laughs> it's actually about someone else uh, who is not you. And this is also not about choice, not about going left or right. Uh, the only choice that's important is the choices we make in the editing room in this case. Um, so, yeah, we had the drama on the one side that was the film uh, side of things, and then we had shoe porn. Uh, you could you could you could pause the film, and then you could see these beautiful slow motion shots of the shoes still staying dry in some way. Um, uh, so we had a combination of both. So on the celluloid side, we had dramatic stories told in the best way possible, no choice. Uh, and it's about a variety of people who are not you. And on the code side of things, we had the form, the format, the way we distributed the thing, uh, which was on YouTube, Facebook, uh, all those platforms. Second example, IKEA, where good day starts. Uh, interaction as an option, not as an obligation. Way more interactive than the Geox case. Uh, let's take a look. 
This is the Ericsson family, still fast asleep in their lovely Norwegian four-room apartment, getting ready to start the day in their own unique everyday fashion. In the first IKEA catalog to be explored through film, we join the five family members during their morning routine, consequently showing you the newest IKEA bed and bathroom products. But there's more, a lot more actually, waiting to be discovered. Because whenever you want, you can pause the film and dive into one of the countless rabbit holes telling you more about the IKEA products or the family's history. You can flash back four years in the past and see the family's future for the 25-year lifespan of their IKEA LED light. An endless amount of custom-made surprises, all of them branching off directly from what you're seeing in the film. Their sandwich recipes, secret text messages, puppet shows, pillow fights, testing IKEA's wide pillow selection, of course, 2D animations, 3D animations, a photo gallery, slow motion mattress bounciness tests, and even a side-scrolling platform game chronicling Jonathan's first steps on his path to love. Oh, and you can play with these lights, or watch the TV commercial, or clean up the bathroom, or don't interact at all, and just watch the film. All products you spot and like can be saved and reviewed after the film has ended. Plus, we'll let you know which extras you might have missed. The experience is available for both desktop and tablet, and not only struck a chord in Norway, but all around the world. IKEA's Where Good Days Start celebrates the ordinary of everyday life in the most playful way we could imagine. Uh, by the way, all these projects are still live, so you could Google them and uh, look them up on uh, the internet. Um, what does film bring to the Ingatorp, which is a table? It's a stupid joke. We should have we should have removed it. Um, okay, three things. Story, uh, a story that works two ways, um, which creatively for us is really interesting. You have to write a script that works as a chronological uh, uh, a chronological film, uh, but you also have to keep in mind that every twenty or ten seconds or whenever people want can ram on their space bar and they can actually dive into one of the rabbit holes and uh, see extra content or play a game or do whatever. It has to work both ways, which is, for me, as a, as a, as a writer, really, really interesting. Second, uh, there's the human element again. Um, if you see a casting video like this, uh, you already know that your work is done for 50% because it's just a really charming kid. And three, tangible sets, especially for IKEA. Um, when you make furniture, it's important that the way the light shines on the fabric, et cetera, it, it has to look real, it has to feel like it would feel if you would buy the stuff. So... Code-wise, this was digital first, interactive experience, even though we also shot the TV commercial on the same set with the same actors, but that was a different project. Uh, E-commerce, you could click on the uh, products that you wanted and you can actually buy them in the online store. And we had the rabbit holes featuring all disciplines from media monks, uh, from platform games to 2D animation, all the stuff that you just saw in the case video. And on the film side, sweet story, great cast and tangible sets. Don't interrupt to interact. Uh, it's not a necessity to interact. You should also be able to enjoy this as a linear film. But if you do interact, it needs to be special. It needs to add something. Uh, it needs to enrich. And we want to reward you for being more engaged. Um, that sounded filthy commercial. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Rewarding for... We're changing you. Anyway. <laughs> third example, Johnny Walker. Yes. So... This would be the third sort of hybrid of film and celluloid where there's a lot more interactivity. It's way more uh, of an experience than a, uh, yeah, than a thing to view. It was a digital whiskey tasting extension to a live whiskey tasting. And what that means, we'll show.
little side note, the music was not created by Media Monks. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say that. All right, so this is a far more interactive digital experience, but there's still a good place for film. We used it where it really matters. So when you have to film real people, actors, dancers, extras, transi uh, transitional scenes between environments and atmospheric shots like what we just saw out of the beautiful intro. But in a way, um, because this is such an interactive piece and you're free to look around in 360 degrees, um, viewers become participants, really. They control what they want to look at, uh, when they trigger the next thing that's going to happen, and they are basically in the director's seat. Um, that makes it very unfilmy. But, <laughs> is that a professional term, unfilmy? All right. Um, but we're still using film techniques to craft this, and that's very important, I think. Um, we do still search for real location references. We put this set together, like you saw in the video, in layers and layers of 3D and Photoshop and matte painting. Um, that all needs to pl be planned out, the same way it would be if it was a plywood and duct tape uh, film set. Um, and the most important thing, framing the shots in 360. Now, that's the challenging part, because if the user is free to look around everywhere, they might, up, might end up anywhere. Like, that frame where they end up has to be an interesting one. There needs to be something that happens there. So there is still a lot of room for a classic directing job, basically. So what we can take from that is... This experience was a tablet-first, 360, uh, full immersion experience. And the film part of it is it created atmospheric shots. We used real people where needed. And we used the same film principles we used for shoots to build these digital worlds. Now, when you say digital worlds, it's easy to think of the next step. You know, the, the current vibe that's going on. Uh, VR. Lots of lovely new storytelling options to play with. Uh, Magic Leap, Oculus Rift. Uh, Google Cardboard, all that stuff. Um, but there's always that case that's an exception to the rule and seems to undermine everything that we're just trying to say. Click to explore my muscle! So this was uh, for Old Spice, Crew White and Candy Portland. Um, despite the work on Oculus Rift and our work at Google Cardboard and Magic Leap, which is all amazing, um, still some clients just want silly stuff. And uh, to us, this campaign was almost retro. This is basically flash and video combined like we used to do. Um, it's funny, it got released like two weeks before Chrome pulled the support for flash. So it's th the swan song of flash, if you will. Now it's really dead. And, uh, you can still play it, just not in Chrome. That's the only... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You have to well, you can a very play it scary pop-up. Go play it. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Uh, so, yeah. Kudos to Wine and Kennedy, too, because they knew this and still wanted to do it. They wanted to make the, the last big flash site. Um, and as long as clients want to do fun stuff like that, uh, we love to join in. Thank the you very end. much.